Waalaikumsalam doktor. Yes, we can hear you. Hello. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes, doctor. So I think I will start. So D one forty five. So um, can you see my presentation? Yes. Yes. Okay. We can do that. So okay. So today I'll be presenting about contrast study. Um, basically, contrast study is all about fluoroscopy, right? Eh? Because um, the other part of the contrast study, for example, for CT and also MRI, you, have, you, you will learn in the their uh, respective lectures. Huh? So for my presentation, I will be I will be concentrating more on um, fluoroscopy. So So this is uh, the outline of my presentation. So we will go through some introduction. So we will let you know something about basic of fluoroscopy. Then I will show some images of, uh, of um, the most common fluoroscopy examination that we do in radiology. Then after that, if you got time, you can like uh, you can ask me anything. Okay. So again, um, I think um, some of you guys. Uh, doing or uh, already done uh, rotation in um, radiology, but then I'm not sure whether you guys have the opportunity to see any fluoroscopy admission because um, sometimes um, sometimes we don't do it so much. Like, depends on um, the request. Uh, sometimes there will be like less um, um, request from the primary team, so we won't do this admission. Uh. But then, whenever we got the opportunity, opportunity, you should go to the fluoroscopy room and see how we perform the examination. So this, I think, an image from hundred years ago. Okay, the uh, how they do fluoroscopy at that time. Okay, so it is like very basic equipment. Okay, and then I think this one is still in um, developmental stages. Huh? And then you can see from here. Okay, um. Um, currently, we are using this machine. Okay. So basically, this is the image receptor, and down here is the um, IR image intensifier. So this thing will produce the X-ray. Okay, and it's like um, process in producing the X-ray, and then patient will lie on the table. And then the X-ray will pass through the patient, and then will be detected by the detector, and then the image will be seen at the monitor here. So the radiologist or the performer will like stand here, and I think this one is the control panel. So from here you can control the machine. Okay. And this one is the C arm. Okay. So this one you can like um, adjust it around. You can tilt it, you can turn it, so that it will be easier for you to um, assess the patient when you are doing the fluoroscopy examination. So equipment. Okay, these are the most important equipment that you use, which is the um, contrast material. Okay, um, some of the contrast material is same as what we use in CT. Okay, um, for example, this one. This one is the Omnipack, yellow or smaller contrast media. It is um, iodine based, and it can be injected intravenously. Okay, sometimes we also use fluoroscopy. 
uh, when we ask patient to drink this or drugs. Okay. But then for GI study, usually we don't we don't prefer unknown or smaller um, uh, uh, contrast media because um, if you give this, it won't stay and coat the mucosa of the um, gastrointestinal tract. So when you give this, it will pass through like very fast. So it will it will be very hard for you to um, assess uh, the um, outline of the. Um, um, bowel movements. Okay. So for um, GI study, usually we prefer to use uh, barium. Okay, this one. Okay. So it can come in powder form or it can come in uh, suspension form. Like this one. Okay. So if it is in powder form, you need to um, prepare. Yeah. You have to mix it with water and then that only you can administer it to the patient. Yeah. This one cannot be injected into um, intravenously. Yeah only can be drink and then there are several contraindications of using this especially if you suspect patient to have any um, um, bowel perforation okay, you cannot use this because if it goes into the peritoneal cavity it can um, cause harm to the patient okay. um, this one is gastrographic okay. this one is um, high or smaller contrast media okay. also iodine based um, this one um, also is quite good okay, and usually we use it as an alternative um, for example if we suspect patient to have um, bowel perforation then we we'll give this one because if this one goes into the peritoneal cavity it won't cause harm so much eh? so it depends on patient um, condition and indication and this one is um, come back spray new okay. actually uh, this one we give the patient it can come in um, tablet form okay and then when patient take it it will like uh, dissolve and forms um, gas so as you know um, um, gas also is one of one type of contrast in the um, radiological examination because for fluoroscopy um, imaging okay, gas uh, you can appreciate it like, because when there is gas um, it will appear um, Loosen or um, opaque depends on um, the state, uh, the type of fluoroscopy animation that you do. Okay, later, I will show you. So, okay, so this is the summary. Okay, um, so barium. Okay, it is a type of positive contrast. Okay, positive contrast means um, it will appears. Um, dense or opaque in the fluoroscopy image, like, unlike the negative contrast. For example, the carbex that I showed just now, which produce gas, it is considered a negative contrast because it won't appear opaque or dense in the uh, fluoroscopy image. Okay. For barium, okay, as I told just now, uh, contrast indication is about perforation okay, because it can cause peritonitis uh, if it goes into the peritoneal cavity. Okay. Um, water, water soluble um, contrast, uh, like low or smaller contrast media, just now that I show. Okay, you can use it for if you suspect bowel perforation. But then, as I said just now, it is not so good in coating the mucosa because it will stay. You like just pass through. So when you do it, you have to do it very fast, and you have to see everything like um, very fast, huh? not to miss any um, findings. Um, gastrography, an alternative of barium, okay. uh, it can be taken already, but then if, um, for example, if patient has like any tracheal spagal fistula, you cannot use this one. because if it go, it, if it is, it go into the trachea, it can cause like pulmonary edema and pneumonitis. So you have to consider everything like, when you get the tracheal spagal Next, um, what you have to do is to prepare the patient as usual. Uh, you need you need to take consent, okay, and then you need to be alert about the allergy and also if the patient is pregnant or not. Okay. And then you have to ask about the comorbids. Um, for example, if patient have any um, renal problem, okay, because um, if you give um, because some fluoroscopy examination. <coughs> For example, in intravenous urography, you will inject contrast media into the 
um, intravenously. So if patient have any renal derangement, it can cause harm. And then also you have to explain about the elimination to the patient, uh, the radiation risk, and also what procedure is going to be done on the patient. So this are uh, the operation for the um, operator. I think all of you have seen this. This one is the let down, also the thyroid shield. And then one more thing is the personal dosimeter. There is many types. Here in suspect we use OSL. This one is to monitor the radiation dose that the operator get. Okay, so every one, every month we have to give back this to the um, to the person in charge, and then they will send it to read this one and to see how many radiation that you get. Okay. This one is to monitor so that you won't exceed the maximum radiation dose that you can get. Okay, so some basics about the fluoroscopy images. Okay, um, when you do fluoroscopy, okay, when you are doing the examination, when you screen, if you, if you see how we do, we will always screen to see the uh, how the contrast is flowing. Okay, that one we call it fluoro um, uh, screening. Okay, so in that um, images, okay. You will do. You will see the invert of the usual X-ray that you see. You see usually. Uh, okay, I will show you. This one is an example. Uh, this one is the image of a um, fluoroscopy when you screen, and this one is an image of the uh, normal X-ray. So you can see the difference. In normal X-ray, the bones will look perfect, but then in when you screen using fluoro, it will appear like. Um, um, blackish uh, or darkish. Okay. So this one is like inward of this one. Okay. So when you give contrast, when you screen, in the contrast bone appears opaque like this one. It will appear uh, like blackish like this one. Okay. So that one, uh, the image that you get when you um, screen the, uh, when you do screening of the fluoroscopy. So these are the summary. Fluoroscopy okay. image are inverted. Okay. It's not as the normal um, X-ray that you see when where bones is opaque. Okay. In this one, bone will appear like black, okay. and uh, the F will appear uh, opaque. Okay. In a normal X-ray, if you see air, air will appear dark. Okay. So it's like upside down, lah. Uh, Uh, this one is, is an example okay, of a uh, cholangiogram. Okay. Here, here you can see, okay, we have given the contrast, contrast is inside the biliary tree, but then it appears dark. Okay. This one is the screen image of the fluoroscopy. When you get, when you take a spot image, okay, when you acquire the image, okay, then it will appear like normal X-ray, where the Contrast appear dense and the bones also appear dense. Okay. Um, okay. Okay, so, um, fluoroscopy basically can be used for diagnostic purposes or therapeutic purposes. And for diagnostic, you can divide it into gastrointestinal tract, thoracic. Um, cardiologists will do cardio coronary angiography. Orthopedic surgeon also we use a fluoroscopy um, to see the uh, when they do when they do the operation to see the prosthetic, okay, the implants, and then for therapeutic, okay, um, we usually we use fluoroscopy or angio for interventional radiography radiology. When we do nephrostomy, when we do um, PTBD. And when we do any angiography procedure, for example, um, embolization or diagnostic um, angiography. Okay, for gastrointestinal tract, okay, for upper GI study, okay, usually we do contrast follow, contrast meal, contrast follow through, enterocolysis, and cholangiography. 
and for lower GI study, we do contrast enema, either a single or double um, contrast uh, uh, contrast enema, or sometimes we also do distal lupogram. So this one is a contrast solo. Okay. Uh, we prefer to use barium for this one. Okay. The indication of this animation is to see any um, um, upper GI tract pathology, okay. uh, especially of the esophagus. For example, if you want to see any uh, mass okay, in the obstructing way, um, uh, esophagus tract, if you want to see any um, reflux, okay, so esophagus reflux, okay, uh, you can do this one. Okay. And sometimes, we also do this to in pediatric patient to detect uh, tracheoesophageal fistula. Okay, but then you, we won't use barium. Usually we use the uh, non osmolar contrast media. Okay. This is some of the anatomy okay, of the uh, barium solo. Okay. Uh, so if you have an uh, image, okay, when you see this, in the indentation. This one is not uh, obstruction. This one is the normal indentation. Okay. The first one is uh, uh, the first one is by the IT arch. Okay. The second one by the main bronchus. Uh, and this one is to show you how double contrast look like. Double contrast means uh, the lumen is filled with air, but then the mucosa is coated by the um, contrast. Okay. So you will see the wall and also the lumen nicely. But then in single contrast, the contrast is filling the lumen. So you can only see the lumen and cannot see the mucosa. This and is an example of a uh, um, contrast mate. Okay, again, preferable is to use barium and indication is to see any um, pathology in the stomach. Whether there is any um, uh, mass or lesion in the um, gastric cavity. This is the anatomy. Okay, I think for you guys, maybe it's a bit advanced. And then, if you are interested, you can look around in Google. I take this image also from Google. And this one is a contrast uh, follow through. And this one is a uh, enterocolysis. What's the difference between these two? Okay. For follow through, we just ask patient to bring the contrast, and then we will wait for the contrast to flow down um, throughout the small bowel. Okay. So we will wait like, maybe for a few hours. But then for enterocolysis, what we do is we will insert a tube. Okay. It's like a uh, um, a rice tube, but then it's longer, okay. and then we will try to pass the tube until the duodenal jejunal jejunal junction, jejunal yeah. duodenal junction, yeah. and then we will pack the tip here, and then from this tube we will give contrast. Why we do this? Because we want the contrast to go into the small bowel faster, so the examination will take lesser time, and then more contrast will go into the small bowel. Unlike this one, okay, the contrast will flow like very, will take very, very long time. And then, by the time contrast reach the um, small bowel, it is already diluted. Okay. This one is a, a optimal image, but then rarely you will get this if you do follow through. Okay. You see, the image will look like very, very hard to see okay, because the contrast won't be like as dense as this one. So, in selector's case, we might want to do enterocolysis. Indication to do this examination is to see any small bowel pathology. Lah. To assess the small bowel um, mucosa, to see any small bowel mass, etc. Okay. Because um, scope, if you want to do scope, you cannot reach the small bowel. Okay. From above and also from below, also, it only can reach until the cecum. So to assess the um, small bowel, okay, uh, one of the examination that can allow you to do to do that is to do follow through or enterocolysis. Okay. But then nowadays we got other options also. 
For example, we can also consider to do MR anthropography. Okay. There is like pros and cons for that one also. So when you have the opportunity, you should try and learn about it. Okay, this is the anatomy of the um, uh, follow-through examination. Okay. So you can see jejunal loop cell and then ileal loop cell. Okay. And this one is the stomach and then you can also appreciate the loop. Okay. Another examination of the up, uh, another examination that you, we but commonly uh, do is uh, cholangiogram. Okay. So what is cholangiogram? Okay. Basically, we are administering contrast into the biliary tree. How we administer it? Okay. Uh, either, okay, this one is ERTP. This is also called cholangiogram. But then how they administer contrast is okay, by um, annulating the distal CBD okay, using the scope. Okay, this one, not radiology, but then surgery team will do it. Okay. But then, this one is uh, percutaneous cholangiogram. What we do is, we use ultrasound, and then we will puncture the liver and try to cannulate the, um, um, the intrahepatic duct. Okay. Once we do that, we will give contrast, and we can assess the delayed retrieval. So, um, usually we do that pre-intervention. Okay, if patient don't have any um, invariant tubes, okay, we'll do this first, and then we will try to uh, puncture it using a larger needle and then put a drainage tube here. Okay. Uh, especially in the case where LCP is not successful. So, we will uh, try to drain the bile by puncturing by puncturing percutaneously. So that one we call it PTBD. Lower GI study, okay. This one is um, contrast enema. How we do it? Basically, uh, patient will lie um, um, supine, okay. And then we will like give contrast through the uh, NS okay, via a tube. And then we will uh, just let the contrast go in. Okay. And then after that, okay, we will drain out the contrast and ask patient to turn around. Okay. Why? We want to um, we want to push the remaining contrast. Oh sorry. Um, before after we have drained out the contrast, okay, we will pump air. Okay. We will pump air through a tube. Uh, why we do that is to force the remaining contrast into the remaining bubble, bubble loops. So when we do this, the contrast will be coating the uh, wall of the large bubble okay, and then we will get this image uh, when we take it. Okay. And then before we do it, we do this, we need to prepare patient. Okay, we have to give um, laxative innovation um, two days prior and then um, um, two days prior of the donation, patient can only take like, um, like very soft food and then the day before the donation, patient need to um, stop taking any um, solid food. Eh? Okay. Why? We don't want um, any um, fecal uh, material inside the last bubble. Okay. If there is any, when, we do, when you do this, you might confuse fecal material with lesion. Okay. This one is the double contrast enema. This one is single contrast enema. Okay. What's the difference? As I told you just now, in single contrast enema, you cannot appreciate the mucosa very well because the contrast is filling the whole lumen. While in double contrast, uh, the contrast is only coating the wall of the large bowel. Okay. So that's the difference. Optimally, you should do this, but not all patients can tolerate this. So sometimes we might get away only with this. One. Single contrast in okay, This is the anatomy. Okay. This one is the descending colon, transverse colon, uh, ascending colon, and cecum here. And you can see part of the terminal ileum. Okay. Okay. 
the double double contrast barium uh, element. The other lower GI as in uh, fluoroscopic examination is distal lubogram. Okay. Usually we do this in patient with <coughs> um, stomach. Okay. Usually the primary team will request this to see the patency of the distal part of the stomach. Okay. Before they do reversal of the stomach, they need to make sure that the uh, bowel distally is uh, patent. Uh. So what we do is we will like um, administer contrast through the um, distal stoma and then we will assess, assess it uh. okay. and then to see the uh, patency of the distal stoma next we go to the genital urinary tract okay. there are um, a few uh, study that uh, we use fluoroscopy to assess the genital urinary tract for example, uh, intravenous urography, micturating okay, uh, cystourography, uh, cystography, and uh, hysterosalpingogram. Okay. IVU okay, is to assess the kidney and the urinary tract. Okay. How you do it? You give contrast um, intravenously to the patient, and then you will take series of images. Okay. Uh, that series of images will represent okay, when the contrast is inside the kidney and then when the contrast flow into the um, ureter and the last one when the contrast flow into the um, urinary bladder and another one is micturating sister urethrogram okay, this one um, you will use CBD okay, and then you will administer contrast directly using the CBD into the urinary bladder uh, okay. And then you will take up the um, uh, CBD, and then you will ask patient to urinate. Okay. When he does this, you will take image. Why you do this is to assess any um, um, uh, any uh, vesicular urinary reflux. That's my reflux from the bladder into the ureter. Okay. okay. And also uh, you can also assess the ure urethral. Okay, when the patient with rate, you can see the outline of the urethra and you can see maybe there is any treatment or not by doing this. Okay, sister cystography, uh, same as metrotin urethrogram, but then uh, this one you just give contrast into the urinary bladder and assess the urinary bladder. Hysterosalpingogram okay, is to assess the, um, uh, the uterus and also the uh, fallopian tube of a, a female patient. Indication is um, if patient have any um, uh, uh, if patient have any suspicion of uh, infertility la, okay, to assess the tract. Okay. This is how uh, uh, IVU is done. Okay. First, you will take a preliminary, preliminary image, which means the plain X-ray of the uh, abdomen. Okay. And then you will administer contrast to the patient. And then you will take image immediately to assess the kidney. Okay. And then after five minutes, you will take another image. Okay. Because in this image, you can start to see the feeling of the calyxes. Okay. And then uh, you will apply uh, abdominal compression or you will ask patient to lie um, prone okay. and then we will take another image after 10 minutes okay, to see the distended pelvic calicea system okay. and then you will ask patient to turn supine so gate okay. uh, we call it like release image and to assess the uh, flow of the contrast from the kidney into the ureter and then into the bladder. Okay. But then you nowadays um, we don't do this so much because we, now we already have TT, so we can straight away do CT to assess. Okay. Indication is to see any um, obstruction in the urinary tract. Uh, example, okay, this one is the preliminary preliminary image. Okay. Uh, the purpose of this is to see whether there is any stones 
in the kidney or along the kidney tract. Okay, this one is the nephrographic image. You can see contrast is already um, in the kidney. Okay. This one is the biographic image. Okay. Five to ten minutes. Okay, you can uh, start to see contrast inside the um, urinary tract. Okay. And this is still in the compression phase. And then when you release, okay, when you ask patient to turn from prone to supine, okay, you can see the contrast flow into the urinary bladder. Okay. So this is a normal IV work. Some anatomy of the IVU images. Another example, but then this one is not normal. When you do preliminary image, you can see a calculus, but then you are not sure whether the calculus is inside the kidney or inside the urinary tract. But then when you do IVU, when you uh, this one is the, in the um, release phase, you can see. There is a filling defect inside the proximal urethra with hydronephrosis on the left side. So this stone is obstructing the proximal urethra. This one is an image of a micturating cystourethrogram. Usually we do this in pediatric patient because they in this population they will uh, they quite common to have like. Um, you are basically urinary, uh, basically urethral reflux. So what you do? You put a CBD, you give contrast. Okay. When you give contrast, you can already see the contrast reflux into the ureter and also kidney. There is like bilateral hydronephrosis. Okay. This one in pediatric, but then <coughs> in adult. Usually, if you want to see a vesicle, uh, vesicle uh, reflux, um, usually when you ask patient to micturate, then you can start to see contrast reflux uh, uh, into the ureter. Okay, that is a bit different. Uh. When you give contrast, you can already see this. In adult, uh, rarely you see this. Uh. Usually, you will have to ask patient to micturate, and then only you can start to appreciate. Um, reflux. This one is a cystogram, okay, same as before. We give contrast into the urinary bladder using a CBD. And then you assess the outline of the urinary bladder. Okay. Um, yes, uh, indication is to see any uh, stone or lesion inside of the urinary bladder. Another indication is post trauma if you want to see any. Um, uh, bladder perforation or lip, okay, you can also do this. But then nowadays, again, uh, we don't do it so much because we got CT. Huh? This one is a hysterosaphingogram. Okay. So this one is a normal hysterosaphingogram. Okay. So, uh, how you do? We okay, will um, use a special um, metallic probe lah, okay. and you will put inside the vagina okay. alternatively you can use a disposable tube also okay, which is made of plastic okay. but then depends on the situation okay. Uh, okay. so from there you will give contrast okay. and then by when you give contrast you have to take the spot images to assess the uh, uterine cavity and also to assess the molecular tube bilaterally lah. This one is normal, but then this one is abnormal. You can see the malapin tube is dilated, or we call it hydrosulfine. So that means there is um, obstruction somewhere here. This is the anatomy, normal anatomy of uh, HSG. When we do it, we give contrast until you can see contrast leaking into the peritoneal cavity. Then when we can like confidently say it's normal. If you cannot see this, you cannot say it is normal. That is one of the criteria. Okay, the other um, proscopy examination that we also do is um, 
dacryocystography. This one is to assess the um, the uh, the drainage of the um, air mata. Uh, yes, lah. Yes. Uh, okay. This one is to assess the uh, cellography is to assess the um, salivary ducts. Ductography is to assess the memory duct okay, from the breast. Myelography is to assess the um, spinal canal. Arthrography is to assess the joint cavity. And also fistulography is to assess any fistula. This also we sometimes we do. Okay. Except for this one. Okay, this one is almost absolute. Okay, because now we have MRI. Okay. So okay, this one is a example of dacrocystography. Uh, this one you can relate the uh, lacrimal duct okay? and then you can assess the flow of the uh, tears uh, okay? or the lacrimal duct indication okay, if there is any suspicion of uh, obstruction along the um, lacrimal duct see this one is the um, uh, cellography of the um, submandibular gland Again, it is to see the um, outline of the salivary duct. Okay. Indication: you suspect any obstruction along the salivary duct. Uh, for example, this one there is suspicion of stricture here. See, there is some narrow in here. Okay. And this one is um, uh, this one is the uh, this one is the ductography. Okay. So how you do it? Okay. Uh, you will cannulate the one of the uh, the memory duct at the nipple okay, using a small needle like um, equipment, and then from that you give contrast. Uh, it is to assess the um, ducts. Okay. For example, in this patient, patient have um, intraductal carcinoma. Okay. This one is the filling defect inside the um, memory ducts. So, anatomy. Okay. How um, to interpret the dacryocystogram? Um, um, this one, the anatomy of the uh, subannular cellogram. Okay. And this one is the anatomy of a uh, of a ductogram. This one is the duct, this one is the main duct, and this one is the um, branches of the duct. Uh, this one is the myelogram that I have said just now, how to do it. Same as you do lumbar puncture, but instead of, uh, instead to take the CSF, what you do here is that you enlist the contrast. After you have done that, you have to, a patient will lie in, when you do lumbar puncture, you know how lumbar puncture is done, right? So same. But then after you have to, you have given contrast, you will ask patient to lie supine, and then you will like uh, tilt the table, maybe like 45 degree like that, so that to allow the contrast to flow upwards, lah. Okay. Indication is to see the any stenosis along the um, spinal canal. But again, now already we already have um, MRI. So it is like much easier to use MRI rather than to use this one. Uh, consideration to use this at this time is if patient cannot do MRI. Okay, for example, like patient like obese patient or patient with like um, metal implant that can not go into MRI. So we might need to do this. Uh. But then personally, I have not get any chances to do this uh, in my practice. Okay, this one is an example of ethnography it's to assess the uh, the joint. Okay, uh, this one is so I program of the shoulder. Okay, and nowadays we do a program. Okay, uh, is to administer contrast for MRI. Okay, 
not in this center but then in other center um, preferably if you want to do like MSK MRI especially if you want to assess the joint the best is to do a program and then do MRI basically uh, in MRI program we will inject gadolinium we have dilute the gadolinium and then we will inject into the joint cavity and then we will do the scan so when we when you do this okay, you will distend the joint okay, and then it will make much easier for you lah, when you do MRI and to assess the joint uh, this, is an, this is an example of a fistulogram okay. uh, uh, patient got a rectal fistula okay. so they inject contrast okay, into the um, opening okay, near the perianal region and then you can see the contrast is flowing into the rectum that's me, it's confirmed patient have um, uh, perianal fistula with communication to the rectum okay, again now we have MRI so MRI also can uh, be used to diagnose the NFS too loud okay before I end this is a rough summary of the differences between all the radiological examination okay, of fluoroscopy okay, um, is quite readily available quite cheap and it is best to assess the lumen and mucosa of the bowel okay. but then it is one the disadvantage is the radiation because when you do it, you will screen a lot of time it okay. will take a lot of image and then that will give a lot of radiation to the patient okay. and then you cannot assess extra luminal pathologies now using fluoroscopy okay. so you can only assess the place where the contrast goes okay. the place around the uh, that area you can assess uh, you still need to do CT or oh, MRI okay. indication okay. you want to assess the any lumen uh, okay. uh, for bowel you want to assess the mucosal outline okay. um, you want to see whether there is any gastroesophageal uh, reflux okay. you want to assess any masses in the um, lumen okay. Uh, if you want to, if you suspect any inflammatory bowel disease, you can do fluoroscopy examination also. Okay. And then contrary indication, okay. pregnancy, pregnancy lah. Okay. All obstruction and bowel perforation is relative contrast indication. Okay. So I think that's it. Okay. Any question? Maybe you can write, uh, type it. It's easier for me. You just type it and then I will read. And meanwhile, any other question? You can type it or you can ask straight away. Huh? You guys have done uh, radiology posting or not? Currently, uh, are three groups already done the um, radiology posting. How many group in your? Uh, four. 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 Oh, so yep. The one. Okay, the one that have finished radiology posting. Have you seen any fluoroscopy examination?
or you don't have the opportunity to see. Okay, question from Ibrahim Islam. How can we describe a fluoroscopy imaging case? Like, for example, in case of chest x ray. Okay. Usually, they won't give you chest x ray with fluoroscopy uh, examination <coughs> because, as I've shown you just now, okay, if they want to give you um, question about fluoroscopy, they will have they will give you a dedicated images. Uh. For example, if you see, uh, if you say, if you are talking about chest, the most common one is the um, uh, solo, uh, contrast solo. Okay. So when you get contrast solo images, it will look like this. Okay. They have to give you these images. Okay. The cervical part, okay. anterior, uh, an uh, anterior view and also lateral view. And uh, uh, middle and distal esophageal images. Okay. This one is usually uh, we take in oblique position. So they won't, they won't give, they cannot give you the whole chest x ray, they will only give you them. Okay. Because when we do fluoroscopy, okay, the field of view is only like very small. I don't have an example. Ah, yeah, like this. Okay. It's like this. So, it's not possible for you to get the whole um, uh, chest. Eh? Usually, we we'll only have part of the chest. So, if they want to ask you about fluoroscopy, they will give you this kind of images. Eh? If you want to describe the finding, eh? okay, depends on the pathology. Okay. But then, if you ask me for uh, for you guys, you do will give like um, very obvious or common pathology. Okay? For example, um, in solo, okay. Um, for example, if you see this, one. solo, yeah, okay. Uh, what we will give is usually if there is a like mass here or like that, so you can see like, okay, the contrast outline. They will be feeling defect inside. No? So, uh, when you see it, you should diagnose it. Huh? How to describe? Okay, basically, what you can say is uh, there is a feeling defect inside the esophagus. Okay. That's how you describe it. Let's describe like that. Because at your level, to describe like very um, detailed, I don't think so. Huh? Not for you guys. Huh? And for your examination, usually we won't give you no scope, you know, it's quite hard. But then you still need to know all the indication and contraindication of fluoroscopy examination. That one you have to know. And then for image interpretation, we read. I haven't seen any question from this um, topic. But then for the patient preparation, we can ask. Do I answer your question, right? Any other question? Maybe the one that has gone into, have seen any aproscopy um, study. Maybe if you don't understand, maybe you can ask me now. Actually, fluoroscopy is very straightforward and it depends a lot on the operator okay? uh, because it is like a dynamic examination because you do it um, on spot. Okay? So, whenever you see something, okay, you will try to, uh, oh, to see it. You will try to uh, move around the patient and move around the uh, the uh, proscopy machine so that we get the image, the most optimal image. Okay. 
So by doing that, you can be convinced lah there is pathology there. Okay. So yeah, depends a lot on you and on your technique lah. Because okay. unlike CT, if you ask ten radiographer to do CT, all ten will give you the same images. Okay. If they follow the protocol, but then for fluoroscopy images, it is not like that. If I do, I will get like a bit a uh, different di different images than the uh, maybe my colleague. Okay. But then end of the day, okay, the most important thing is that the image you get um, represent the finding that you want to say to the clinician. That is the most important. Uh. But then of course we we also have our own um, standard images that we take. But then on top of that, we still do like extra images okay, for our own um, our own for our own lah, so that we can like um, diagnose it easier. Okay. So for example, if you see any like feeling defect here, so you can already start to move patient around, and then you can ask patient to drink contrast more, for example. Or you might also ask patient to like just don't drink any any contrast. Just ask patient to swallow so that the contrast go down and then the contrast will outline the uh, mass clearer. Okay. So by doing that, it's easier for you to read the study. Any other question? Okay, okay, so I think that's it uh, for today. So sorry for last week because I need to cancel the class like last week because I have something to do. So I think that's it. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr.